And then uh, this morning, I get the Wall Street Journal out, and it says, well, we don't care how long this lasts uh, because we're winning. Now, this isn't some damn game. The American people don't want their government shut down, and neither do I. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Speaker of the House John Boehner talking about games, and that's the topic of today's show. Now look, you can say what you want about the games themselves, the games are being played. Now, are they right? Oh, absolutely not. We all know that. Now, I'm going to start, since we're talking about games, about the hot mic between Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell. So let's take a look. Do you have a second? I'm all wired up here. Um, I just did CNN. I just go over and over again. We're willing to compromise. We're willing to negotiate. I think. I don't think they poll tested we won't negotiate. I think it's awful for them to say that over and over again. Yeah, I do too. And I, and I just came back from the two-hour meeting with yeah. him. And that was that was basically the same view privately as it was. Probably. I think if we keep saying we wanted to defund it, we fought for that, mm-hmm. but now we're willing to compromise mm-hmm. on this. I think they can't. And we're gonna. We I think. Well, I know we don't want to be here, but we're gonna win this. I think. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in all honesty, I was gonna actually let that slide, not because of my political stance, but because what they were talking about, which was basically strategy, which had no. Which I had no big deal with that, even though it's wrong what they're talking about in the video itself. Now, I'll tell you what did irk me during the week. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, you probably already know about what happened over at the World War II Memorial this week. Now, I'm going to show you this video of all people that showed up, Michelle Bachman, and here's what she did while she was there. I, you know, obviously I'm not dressed today. I was out walking and I got an email, a panicked email from a member of Congress saying that they had a whole delegation coming from Mississippi, another delegation coming from Iowa of the World War II honor vets. And what that is, is it's a, it's a free trip for, for veterans of World War II to come and see the World War II Memorial. Well, you're talking about people who are aged 84 to 99. And so I ran over as quick as I could and I was coming in from that direction. I had my iPhone. And I was taking a picture. I mean, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was big buses, this narrow strip of sidewalk. And there were all these veterans standing here behind police tape. And they're prevented from going in to see the memorial. So um, about maybe 8 to 12 of us members, uh, one member had a um, a scissor cut the tape. And then we just escorted the um, veterans in. And there was a bagpiper along. And he led the way. And you should have seen these veterans. They had smiles from ear to ear. They were so thrilled to be here. And uh, my my stepdad was just here on an honor flight. And uh, you know, these guys, they can't take the 80 degree sun very long. They can't stand very long. They fly in and they fly out the same day. So they have a tiny little window of opportunity to be here. They can't deal with bureaucratic red tape. I mean, when they're here, they gotta go in. So we just did what we, we figured if we were here, we could use our authority and get these uh, veterans in. We were able to do that. And it was pure joy, pure joy for them. I think even greater joy for us. So um, it was it was Republicans that were here, but I have no doubt that this would be bipartisan, that if, that if Democrats got the email, I think they'd come down too, because I think one thing we all agree on is uh, our World War II veterans and all of our veterans to uphold them. Now look, here's what it is. It was a PR stunt, and everybody knows it. And a lot of conservatives ran over there when that went down, just try to get some good press, make make people feel sorry for them. And I got a big time issue with that because it's totally morally wrong. Now, while speaking of Michelle Bachman, while we're over there, here's what a, a heckler came up and did. So let's take a look. He's not an idiot. The government shut down because of people like you, Michelle Bachman. 
You should be ashamed of yourself. Don't pander to a vet. Shame on you. Right. <laughs> you think this is real? You don't think there's two ponies? Oh, you think this you know is what? real? Take a picture, John. Whoa, 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 no, no, no. You no, no, no. Right. So let's use, so let's go ahead and use them. Damn, let's use the picture. But he's being used. He's being used by this being used. He is being used. He's my father. I brought him. Okay. Then I'll let it go. Right there. I brought I, I flew up here for this reason. To visit the monument? You want to see things at a 90 year Okay, not for all of Hey, everybody, please, let us go. Okay. Oh, okay. Where was the honor flight? We didn't know about all this. Thank you for your service. We didn't know it was going to be shut down. We arranged this six months ago. Oh, I'm going to take you guys. Let's keep the politics on. John. Doug, let's take a picture. Shemaya Clark. And tell me your name. Don't bother taking it. You've got to love it. When somebody calls a politician out like that with everybody watching. And a lot of people aren't talking about that particular part of that. And I'm actually sad about it. Because it should be talked about. Now with this government shutdown going into week two. You're probably wondering who's being affected. Now ladies and gentlemen. Myself personally know a few people that, had, that has been furloughed right now. Now some of them are working. But they're not getting paid for it. Now I saw this video about a daycare center in Little Rock. Now, let's take a look at this video. I'll talk about this. Where's your bed? Let's go take a look at it. For Wendy Dwyer, volunteering at the Our House Shelter for the Working Homeless is a long-held ambition. Hey, you'll, you'll be on camera if you get in bed. She's one of a network of paid volunteers in a government-funded anti-poverty program that's now run out of cash. Wendy's annual salary isn't much and she's already relying on friends and family to help her stay here. Like many in her position, she's worried about what will happen if she's forced to leave. Meals wouldn't be served and, and children would not have um, the same day-to-day -day contact that they do that gives them stability. Um, you know, things could change for the worse for the people who are most at risk. Homeless shelters across the U.S. rely heavily on funding from the federal government to keep their doors open. For now, our house is solvent but will face serious problems the longer the partial shutdown goes on. This is hurting the least among us. This is hurting homeless families and their children who are not going to have a meal, who are not going to have a safe space for their children to be so that they can work their way out of homelessness. Across Little Rock, the effects of the partial shutdown are steadily being felt. And for local government official Richard Weiss, the message for politicians in Washington is simple. Quit playing games, get back to work, do what the people, do, do what, what your constitutional responsibilities are. Pay attention to what the, your oath of office and follow it. Real simple. The fact that people here in Little Rock are frustrated won't come as a surprise. It's a feeling replicated across the entire country. But it's when you see the very real effects on those who depend on government programs to survive that you begin to understand that emotion. While politicians squabble, the needy and those that help them will soon begin to suffer. And for many, that is simply unacceptable. Andy Gallagher, Al Jazeera, Little Rock, Arkansas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's just a small snippet of what's going on. At least far as somebody's going to be, fur going to be furloughed, excuse me. Now, she's, she's getting it handled right now, but you can already tell it's going way downhill. Now, not just her. Now, I saw a video this morning that I'm going to share with you about this, about this um, tourist in Philadelphia. And let's hear what he had to say. Yes. Uh, can I ask you how, how you feel about this, uh, that you're not able to go into the parks? I think it's less important whether I go into the park. It's a sad commentary on the U.S. political system. Oh, and democracy. Does the police presence surprise you, or is doesn't matter? I don't think it's the issue of police presence. It's the issue that a government that's supposed to be democratic decides it's more important to close itself down to the public and to public opinion. I think that they should stop taking a salary as well as their civil servants. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as you can sound, that he's not very happy. And you know what? He's 100% correct. 
not only he's correct, that even the president talked about it a little bit. Now, here's what he said in his weekly press conference. Unfortunately, the far right of the Republican Party won't let Speaker Boehner give that bill a yes or no vote. Take that vote. Stop this farce. End this shutdown now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the votes has always been there for a clean vote like he's talking about. A straight up vote on funding of the government. No amendments, no fluff, no nothing. A straight up vote. Now, the reason why they haven't done this yet, this now I was thinking because they was holding on themselves, meaning that they have something to gain out of this. Now I'm gonna read you a quote that I read this morning from Representative Dennis Ross of Florida. And he said, quote, Republicans have to realize how many significant gains we've made over the last three years. And we have not only in cutting the spending, but in real really turning the tide on other things. And he continued, we can't lose all that when there's no connection now between the shutdown and the funding and Obamacare. I think now it's a lot about pride. And you know what? He's absolutely right. It is all about pride right now. Pride from the Republican standpoint to where they gotten this far, they don't want to give up. In all honesty, they don't they think if they give up now they're gonna look weak. But public opinion is out there right now saying that your own personal gain is costing the country. Now we got the debt limit coming up in a couple weeks, and I spoke about that on last week's program. Now I don't think they'll let it go over the edge like that, but it is coming down to that point. And this is gonna be to now to where who's gonna blink first? And that's a sad way of looking at it. And I guarantee you ask anyone of your friends online around the world, because I have, we're looking like a complete international joke right now. And, that's, and that is no fluff. Don't believe me? Go and ask somebody from another part of the country that might be following this. They'll tell you the exact same thing I just said. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this week's program. I hope you enjoyed it, and always be careful, and remember... Fear to rip.